Combating flat earth is like tackling the waves of the ocean. You deal with one flat earther and then coming up right behind them is another one. Except the next one is using the same tired arguments as the one that came before it. But recently, I stumbled across a flat earther who I've never seen before on YouTube. And whilst most of their arguments were the same old nonsense, one of them piqued my interest. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a quick word from me about today's sponsor, Ground News. Before we get underway with today's episode, I'm happy to announce that I was reading today how NASA and ESA have confirmed that the asteroid 2024 YR4, you know, the one that we're all starting to worry about, poses no threat to Earth in 2032. And I was reading that story on Ground News, which was actually founded by former NASA engineer called Harleen Core, who worked on the James Webb Telescope. Now, Ground News combines stories and articles from thousands of outlets, local and national, in one place so readers can see the full picture of what's being reported around the world. As you can see here, Ground News shows you if there's any political leanings for each publication. And in this instance, with the asteroid story, we can see that it's mainly centre-driven with 157 total news sources. For every story, you get a quick visual breakdown of the news outlets covering it, their political bias, uh, how factual the source is, which entity owns the source, and which countries are covering the story. You can also click on any of the headlines to read the story from its original source. The best thing is you can develop a well-rounded world view. See every side to every story with access to international perspectives that are hard to find. So then you can make informed decisions where you can read, watch and share the best information available. Now Ground News is mission centric. It's not about eliminating bias, but providing better transparency. And they're funded by their community, not by ads or big investors. So go to ground.news Simon to stay fully informed on breaking news and compare coverage. Subscribe through my link for 40% off unlimited access if you support the mission and find it as useful as I do. Right, on with today's video, which comes from a flat earther called Time Gate Moments. And he is very interested in talking about railways today. It is proof number three of his flat earth proofs on his channel. And in his words, it is undoubtedly another clear proof how the natural configuration of the earth is horizontal or plane level. Let's see, shall we? Here we go. Hi there guys, welcome to the video. What a brilliant presentation we have for you today. But guys, first, please, can you subscribe in five, four, three, two, one. Excelente. Well, I like his chipper demeanor. I'll give him that. Time gate moments. Really appreciates the way you press that button. Thank you for your support. What's he doing here? Viewers are strongly advised to take extra care at level crossings. They are highly dangerous. Make sure you look on your right and check on your left and check the light before you do anything to cross. Sorry, is this a flat earth video or a public information video about level crossings? Don't get me wrong, I love the message. I just thought you were going to try and prove to me how the earth is flat. Now, we're not really interested in that near miss madness with a guy and his bike. We are optimistic by now he learned his lesson. What we are after is the railway tracks foundations themselves. Therefore, let us show you proof number three of the Flat Earth series. The first thing you must do is consider an objective basic observation of this railway layer. What do you see? Is it obvious? A railway configuration that is built and engineered on a flat surface all the way onto the horizon. You wonder, how is this achieved? 
Well, no, I don't wonder that because the Earth is not the size of a potato. It's huge, so big in fact that that curve is barely noticeable when you're laying foundations for railway tracks. Whilst those tracks appear flat over short distances, they gradually follow the curve of the Earth over longer stretches. Engineers do account for curvature with these large scale projects. Here we go. Datum line. I'm sure some of you, not many, have heard about this basic uh, elementary in railway engineering. Why is it so critical? This is because if the foundation, the laying out and projecting of railways were built on a globe, the datum line would be the arc of a circle corresponding to the latitude of that place or the length of location between the two, A and B. Okay, great. Let's say a length of track then is one kilometre long. Now that is 0.0025% of the total circumference of the Earth. Here is what that looks like when you zoom in to one kilometre of the Earth. As you can see, at one kilometre, you cannot notice any curve at all with your eye. However, the opposite is the case. That the datum line for railway projections and engineering is always a horizontal line, which is proof that the general configuration of the world and the Earth is horizontal or flat, which is a fact. No, it's proof that the localised area where the railway is being built is flat, which is not surprising because, as I said, the Earth is not the size of a potato. Here's another very important tool for railway plane measurements, a spirit level. What does it do? Please read it for yourself. Great, a spirit level only measures the small localised area where it's laid. It indicates whether that tiny section is level or not, not whether the entire railway is flat over many miles. Now, railways are built to follow the terrain and follow the Earth's shape. Gradual elevations are incorporated as needed for a smooth travel, but over long distances, the tracks naturally conform to the curve of the Earth. In the late 19th century, uh, in England, the home of industrialism and railways, Professor Bourne, from his magnificent work, tells us this. Of course, there were others, such as the navigator and intrepid traveller E.F. Knight uh, on his cruise of the Falcon, who likewise observed and recorded and logged in what he saw in terms of uh, railway construction engineering in relation to the Earth's surface. Now, Likewise, in other records, it is well known that in the Argentine Republic and other parts of South America, there are railways thousands of miles long without curve or gradient. That claim is simply false. No railway spans thousands of miles without gradual elevation change or accounting for the Earth's curvature. That Argentinian railway you mentioned stretches over 838 miles, has gradual elevation changes and, of course, follows the curve of the Earth. Now, to bring your attention once again onto this illustration, uh, by the way, this was briefly explained in the first video as part of the Flat Earth series, uh, Proofs 1 and 2, so check it out. Uh, nevertheless, this is known as the vanishing point or linear perspective point. It is how you see the world. It is the natural geometry. It has been designed that way, you see. Yes, and if the Earth was actually flat, the vanishing point would not exist as it does now. There would be no crisp line. On a flat Earth, the vanishing point would be blurry and inconsistent, with no bottom-up obscuring. Uh, notice how the horizon meets the top tip of the road, and the sun above, as she runs her course, as time lapses, she will inevitably vanish out of your sight because of distance, nothing to do with curvature or bending Earth. Even though the sun doesn't change angular size, right, okay. It is this basic principle or axiom or foundation that railway tracks are designed on using the datum line. Fact. But even so, you might be thinking, how do we even calculate the supposed curvature anyway? Here's your formula right over here taken from James's mathematical tables. Even though that isn't the correct formula, but yes, please continue. 
just use uh, this example for any uh, future so-called curvature calculation requirements or distance and hopefully uh, you'll be able to get some results for even this one the Trans-Siberian Railway with more than 5,770 miles in distance you see as you said, the Trans-Siberian Railway covers 5,772 miles. Over that distance, the Earth's curvature would drop around 2,600 feet. However, that change is so gradual and spread over such a distance that it is imperceptible to the human eye. Ah, uh, closely followed by the American, or California, Seder, with more than 2,400 miles stretching out. See what you get there. It is ridiculous, hence why on the first place the so-called curvature is not taken into account when constructing railway uh, structures. But as I said, it is. Large-scale engineering projects like tunnels, bridges and railways all follow the curvature of the Earth. Large-scale engineering projects like bridges, tunnels and railways all factor in the curve of the Earth. The Verrazano Narrows Bridge in New York has a curvature correction. Its towers are 1.6 inches further apart at the top than they are at the bottom. And that is due to the Earth's curvature. The Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel spans 17.6 miles. And engineers accounted for curvature whilst designing it. And railways are too, built using a technique called gradual grading. The tracks stay parallel to the local gravitational field, which naturally curves with the Earth's surface. Yes, you have guessed it. Engineers and railway contractors have to take into account Earth's natural topography, such as mountains, valleys, uh, waterways, or hills such as this one, uh, inclines or declines or slopes, deep gorges where they have to build a bridge from one end to the other to connect the system, uh, tunnels that have to be cut through mountainsides or rock systems, uh, the type of landscape, is it a desert? Is it rocky? Is it a marshland? Is it a river? Exactly, you're totally debunking yourself here. By highlighting that need for complex engineering solutions, you are actually reinforcing the reality of a curved Earth, not disputing it. Building a track level in engineering terms means level to gravity, not geometrically flat. Well done you. Well, there we go. Another Flat Earth Friday comes to a conclusion. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of this proof. As I say, we're all done and dusted for another one. Thanks so much for watching today. As always, it's very much appreciated. If you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to the channel and a big thumbs up will be help, very helpful too. Thank you. Just enough time for another word from me about today's sponsor, Ground News. So remember, go to ground.news slash Simon to stay fully informed on breaking news and compare coverage. Uh, click the link in the description to get 40% off unlimited access if you support the mission and find it as useful as I do. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great day and I'll see you all tomorrow for another Saturday session. See you then. Bye bye. <laughs>